Hey what's up everybody welcome to the channel so in past few weeks there are lots of oxygen os port made available for the me at all series so i went ahead and installed one on my poco md pro this is oxygen os 11 ported from the one plus eight pro by hello boy in this video we will be taking an in-depth look of this port and also tell you how to install this rom on your phone if you don't know, Oxygen OS received a major overhaul in the latest 11 version. It kinda looks like One UI because of the extended UI, although it improves the one-handed usability, but most of the user criticize this new change because OnePlus is moving away from the stock Android style UI. For me personally, I am satisfied by the new looks of the UI. I feel the new extended UI makes them Oxygen OS even better than ever before. I will even go on to say I will prefer the Oxygen OS over the stock Android. This UI elements are even carried forward to the system apps like Tyler and Messages. Also the design elements of stock apps like Clock, Gallery, Game Space is quite refreshing. Even the weather app is so well designed. Oxygen OS comes with some great pre-built features. Some of them include parallel apps through which we can run multiple accounts of apps like WhatsApp. Then we have App Locker, which as the name suggests, used to lock the apps for security purpose. We also have some additional digital well-being features to reduce our mobile usage. Now Oxygen OS 11 brought always on display functionality to the OnePlus phone. Yeah, OnePlus didn't have the AOD functionality before. But the sad part is that it doesn't work on this phone and the reason being the lack of AMOLED display. Also for some reason double tap to wake is not working. Now talking about performance, I'm really satisfied considering it's just an initial build. Apps run pretty well on this one and I haven't faced any force close issues. The phone does feel a bit jittery on the first boot but later on I figured out that it's because of the live wallpaper. I had even ran a couple of Geek benchmark and it got similar score as any other Android 11 ROMs. The RAM management is also pretty good, although make sure you turn off the battery standby optimization as it tends to close the apps in the background and I don't think it's making any difference in the battery life. The battery life on this phone is not the best. You hardly get 10 hours of screen on time, but again, 9 to 10 hours is still a pretty solid battery life. If you really care about the longer battery, you should check out some other Android 11 ROMs. As for charging, yes, this ROM does support 33 watt charging, but there is a weird glitch. Phone doesn't show any sort of indication while on charging. Like here, as you can see, no indication whatsoever, although it does start charging. It's a bit strange, but yeah, good to know that at least it supports 33 watt charging. Other major problem with this ROM is the hotspot. Hotspot is broken, so you can't share internet wirelessly. You need to rely on USB thirtering for that. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is working, even the phone calls through Volti is working through both the same. And yeah, carrier aggregation is also present here. This Oxygen OS 11 port is pre-rooted, hence it fails the safety net test and therefore some banking apps might not work on this ROM. Also there is no pre-installed camera app, so you need to install third-party camera apps like Gcam and Open Camera for clicking photos and videos. And that too, not all the Gcams are working. I was able to run TR cam with only the primary camera working. So yeah, there are lots of niggles here and there, but considering this is the very first port, it is amazing, especially the performance of this ROM. So if you don't use the camera that much and can live with the dead hotspot, then definitely try out this port. Else, check out my other ROM videos. For installation, make sure you download all the required files from the description section. Now boot into the recovery and you need to perform a clean flash, so make sure you backed up everything beforehand. Now wipe data and cache and then flash the ROM zip file. Once done, flash the second file called the boot.zip and finally flash the Poistron kernel. Now reboot to the system, the first boot might take a couple of minutes, so yeah, just settle on for a minute or so and you're done. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Do let me know what you think of this port and if you are facing any issues, then make sure to comment down below. Until then, thanks for watching. My name is Rishav and I will catch you guys in the next one.